soup. Oh, cut that off before we get copyrighted. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron the Nerd Soup Monkey, and we are here to review part five of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Good episode. Uh, I think a lot of people definitely enjoyed this one for what transpired at the end of the episode. But, you know, overall, this this show really does feel like a movie that's being stretched out into six episodes. And this part, you really feel it. There, there was no reason to cut episode four short and then begin it here. You know, they, <laughs> there's, they just don't feel episodic. That's a criticism I think a lot of people have. And it, it's one that definitely, it's taking me out of it a bit. But when things got going, and like I said, the ending of this episode was so great great to see Darth Vader in his element that way. But I don't know, what do you think about this episode, Aaron? Probably my favorite of the season so far. And yeah, a lot of that has to do with some of the flashbacks and getting to see Vader in his element, like you said, just absolutely showing his full powers. And, you know, I enjoy shit like that. It might not have been like the most uh, sound episode storytelling wise, but I think in this, these 40 minutes were the the best time I've had watching this series. The most fun I've had watching the series. Those flashbacks, going to see Hayden in the role again, I thought was fantastic. Even though he really doesn't have much to do, I think it just kind of hammers home uh, who Anakin is and always trying to go for the, you know, always trying to overcome these self doubts that he has and try to prove himself over and over again. And I kind of like that uh, way they incorporate incorporated those flashbacks to kind of hammer home the end where Obi-Wan even though he's not at his most powerful right now is still able to his biggest strength is knowing Anakin and basically knowing exactly what he'll do and how he thinks and that's kind of how he's able to escape yeah hits him with an old okie doke those flashbacks were cut in very nicely uh and I definitely enjoyed seeing Hayden Christensen back in the robe it caught me off guard when the episode first started when they pulled back and it's him episode two Anakin it's not even episode three doesn't even have the mullet he's got the ponytail so still still young still learning and they're definitely trying to make it so that it fits when Darth Vader says when I left you I was but a learner now I am the master so here you see that yeah Obi-Wan is still the master he can fight in ways that he could fight without a weapon as he tells Roken there are other ways to fight and it, you know the first thing that popped into my head is what Luke Skywalker did at the end of The Last Jedi I, I like when Jedi yes. pull these types of yeah. tricks where it is about saving people and preserving life and being on the defensive and that was Ob- Obi-Wan's specialty throughout his career so <laughs> throughout his career like yeah. he's a he's been 20 years in the league <laughs> back of his baseball card <laughs> defensive specialist 3 and D 3 Is and Obi D. a Hall of Famer? Um, I think after A New Hope yeah definitely came out of retirement and uh, it's like Bernie Mac in 3000 he's, you know? like, he's like Jeter like not the best player but what he meant to the game he's a shoe in I thought like the siege was pretty well done too. I just don't know why people stand in the, like in the wide open and shoot at stormtroopers. Now we just stop and shoot. Take some cover. That was actually a very sad moment. I, obviously, for a character that we just met like two episodes ago. I think, oh right, Tala. Tala. That was a, that was like a that, that was a sad moment, and especially showing when she had the force ability too. That was pretty neat. Could have used that twenty minutes ago, but um, it still worked out pretty well. And she was able to do the uh, the suicide bomb thing and help uh, buy some more time for everyone to escape. But um, yeah, I thought that was Why like... Why didn't she throw the bomb at them? <laughs> they looked like they were a distance away, but the, for dramatic effect, she had to keep it in her hand. It's... You know, it's the zombies all surrounding you and then mm-hmm. it, it explodes. But they're, they're like 10 paces away. <laughs> so it would have been hilarious if they just showed the stor- stormtroopers weren't injured whatsoever <laughs> and she just blew up. Well, what would she do that for? Well, was she trying to... Like, crash the tunnel? Okay, well, I guess we'll just continue. (laughs) Move forward. We'll just keep walking. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it was interesting, like you did say with uh, Luke, that's the first thing I thought of when he was just like, "Ah, I'm just going to try to buy time. And obviously, um, he goes to speak with Reva, and we got some more backstory. I think a lot of people kind of predicted that she was actually a youngling, and that kind of ties back to the one of the first scenes we saw of the series of flashback to order 66 yeah uh, what do you think about that what it does for reva's story do you think that you look back now on those first four episodes a bit more favorable towards her character um i never really hated her character to begin with well, but i'm not saying you hated her but i was just a bit wait- more favorable yeah i think you were lukewarm i think i could say that sure and i think a lot of people were too but i think this definitely adds some depth to this character and kind of thinking about it from now having to go back and seeing that this character went through this and like what her motivations would be coming out of that and kind of just feeling abandoned and alone and that can obviously uh equate to having these kind of this rage in her that she will do anything for revenge even if it is something where she can be sentimental to what vader's doing to people 
but also realizing that her only way to get close to him is to be just as ruthless. Yeah, and once again, you know, taking from the samurai stories, um, she's obviously not a ronin. She's working under people, but the samurai whose clan was slaughtered and she's out for revenge. And what does she do? She gets closer to the enemy by working under him, trying to deceive him. And I thought that scene between Riva and Obi-Wan was written very well when Obi-Wan puts it together and he says, you're hunting him. And he obviously offers to work together because he's basically got the same goal, but she also pushes back on that. that are, are you ready to let Anakin die? Are you willing to make that move to take out who was essentially your brother, basically your son, mm-hmm. uh, to an extent? And, uh, once again, Ewan McGregor continues to be very good as this character, and I, you know they're giving him more lines of dialogue as the episodes pile on. But I, I think his, you know, the physical, the 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 way he emotes when he's having these conversations about his past and what it actually does mean in these moments, he's been very solid throughout. I I do still wish that they, you know, got more into the psyche of this character, but like I said, he's been good. Um, And I think Moses Ingram, this is probably the best that she's been. You know, those whispers, it's like Vader can hear you, you know? He's out on the ship, he's not even on the planet, but you're still looking over your shoulder. And what the show has done to make him an intimidating character, like I said, Star Wars has never had a bad Vader appearance. This is arguably his best one. But (laughs) the reason I I mentioned that is because when she's walking up behind him, not to skip ahead, I I was terrified for her. You know, even when you think that a character has the drop, obviously he's not going to die. We see him in the movies. But every every moment with this character is so unsettling. He is as menacing as he's ever been. You know, even when he's just on the ship telling her, you know, what the game plan is going to be and he and he gives her the, the pin. You know, <laughs> you never know what he's going to do next. Is he going to, you know, force push her out of the room or some shit? It's yeah. hard to get on that guy's good side. It really is. Um, but I guess the Grand Inquisitor, the ex-Grand Inquisitor, now the new Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, Rupert Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is uh, actually good. I haven't really shouted him out, but I, I do like him in that makeup. And I think he's he's actually good as that character, even though he's been on, you know, had a limited amount of screen time. So they didn't break canon. Thank God. God. Or at least in this instance. Not for me, just for Star Wars in general. <laughs> just for the fandom. The fandom doesn't need to go through that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, when she goes up behind him and they have that moment where he basically is like, yeah, I, I knew this. <laughs> like, thanks. And we see Vader absolutely just toy with her and baby her. It just shows. Like, I thought, like, you know, Reva has seen as capable. She's obviously working with the Inquisitors. You know, she's a capable uh, force user, uh, uh, warrior and things of that nature. And just to see Prime Vader absolutely just, first of all, grabbing that ship and bringing it down was awesome. And then him just ripping it open and everything. And then... So aggressive. Yeah. So (laughs) strong. And him, like, not using a weapon, too, going back to, like, Obi-Wan, the first half of that fight with Reva, just dodging and using the force to parry her attacks. And then when he finally uh, takes the saber and breaks it and he's holding the two sabers I thought that was awesome I wish we got more of a frontal shot of him wielding the two we only kind of get like a side shot which is kind of you know I think they could have had there's an opportunity to have like a a six still there but uh, what are you gonna do I thought that fight was so well done Uh, it's the best action scene of the series so far shout out to Deborah Chow what she was able to do with that character in that moment like I said there have been so many great Vader moments this one may be my favorite because he's so cocky and he's looking down on Reva when he calls her a youngling that's all you need to know about what this fight what's going to transpire in this fight that he's going to completely dominate her like you said parrying her blows with the force and he goes okay you want to do this one-on-one let me take that lightsaber from you i'll split it in two here you go let's keep going how long do you want to do this for oh wait my buddy's back here he's not dead didn't break cannon you're out. <laughs> I, I, the one thing that I didn't like about the fight is that I didn't think that she was going to die because I, I thought that it would have been way too dark of an ending for that character. But she should have died. There's no way Vader is keeping her alive. Not a chance to toy with her. He mm-hmm. just spent two minutes toying with her and then you don't finish her. I'm not buying that whatsoever. And, and once again, it happens a lot in Star Wars. It does happen a lot. But man, what we've seen this, he's been ruthless. Yeah. And you've, you've, beaten this person right this is just the victory lap Mm -hmm. so you're just gonna leave her there to obviously recover look at you look at the mirror bro (laughs) you're on the side of a fucking volcano (laughs) your boy just went through the same thing (laughs) they're like we need to cut her into thousands of pieces to make sure she doesn't come back and even then somebody's gonna stitch her up remember the red-headed horn guy that was trying to kidnap you when you were a kid remember what happened to him yeah, he's actually a buddy of him. That's the same guy? That's Molly? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I thought I thought he was actually going to respect it. Like when she was there, because I didn't think she was going to die either. But I thought he was going to be like, okay, I see. Oh, you. like get get back up. Let's finish this the right way. Like props for trying to kill me, but you you still have a job. Yeah. Right. That like, would have been funny. It's like, oh, well, that's what I'm eventually going to try to do. Right. Well, now she gets that. Um, the it's like wait wait till I kill Emperor Palpatine. Then when I'm the Emperor, then you can try to kill me. Then there's there's <laughs> a. There's a way we do this There's here. There's a position in this here for you in the future. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Old customs die hard. Like 20 years too early. Try to kill me later. <laughs> and he's definitely not going to come back to life, right? No, no, no. Once I kill him, he's done. Trust me. He's done. <laughs> I'm going to throw him down a lot of stairs. Uh, another aspect of this episode I thought was very skillfully done is the way they spliced in not only the Obi-Wan Anakin flashbacks, but the flashbacks of Reva watching Anakin uh, storm the Jedi Temple and the way they spliced it in with this confrontation in the present time. Like I said, that's such a traumatic thing to experience and it never leaves you. And if she was to meet her end in this moment, y- you could see the life leave her eyes that she's had all this rage, all of this power throughout the series. And now she's just once again, a helpless kid. You know, it's a psycho logically devastating moment and imagining those as your last moments is just so terrifying so i thought that was really well done but you know obviously she doesn't die uh and then reva finds that transmitter of course and it you know it's the call from bail fucked up by dropping that message and uh you know i guess she's going to that's going to be her last play take luke skywalker hostage now just to get back at obi-wan or maybe use that as a way to draw vader back in kind of exposing that secret obviously we know it's not going to to go well for her. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, we only saw Luke in that first episode, and it's Obi-Wan overlooking him. So, obviously, we've had so much to do with Leia. I'm not surprised that now Luke may have a, a bit of a role in this final episode. It's hard to get nervous about what's going to happen here. We know I- even Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, you know, they, <laughs> they eventually get crisped. But, yeah, you know, they're, they're going to survive this. So, going back to Tatooine, they fucking love that planet, don't they? But I can't stop thinking about that fight, man. That's the first time watching this show where my my blood was flowing yeah uh, where i was cheering where i was just so locked into what was happening on screen but i think a lot of the stuff before it you know obi-wan trying to you know he's gradually becoming more hopeful he's seeing the, the what these people have done uh the with the path uh bringing so many people to safety and now kumal Najiani's getting in on the act here <laughs> <laughs> but like the stuff with Leia with her in the vents like it's we're just buying time for the big moments right yeah and it, it feels like a lot of this series is just buying time for the bigger moments once again Tala she's here and then she's gone so it, it's hard to get too attached to a character like that and and really feel that emotional devastation of her death I think that kind of hit me a little I was right like, is it because she's a Game of Thrones actor no, I, I think, like, she left an impact. And but even I, when she's I, talking about when they used to kidnap the kids, mm-hmm. she's like, but you know what? You can make it better. And Obi-Wan's like, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, she's had such an impact on Obi-Wan. She did. A lot of sentences are getting him back in the game, you know? I wish therapy was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it better. You know that, right? Fuck. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Wow, I gotta get back in the fight, a.k.a. sit on Tatooine for another ten years. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it is true. <laughs> It's like, all right, I'm done here. But there, there is a part of me watching this, and I'm like, yo, why is Obi Wan doing this? <laughs> what, what is he accomplishing here? But I guess once again, you know, they they establish that even if he may not be physically as strong as Vader, mentally he's still got him. Yeah, you can make an argument that never changed because a New Hope, he does the same thing. Yeah, it's um, you know, you're gonna strike me down, and I'm gonna become a Force ghost, idiot. I think that's exactly what he said. Quote Are you sure? Mo- exact quote from the okay. movie. <laughs> I hope they acknowledge that in the show. They don't break canon with that. But it is interesting to see what they're going to do with Luke and Reva. Uh, Bail Organa, watch a mob movie for once. No, never say anything important over the phone. It's always going to come back to bite you. But um, like you said, it's hard to imagine like what they're going to do with that because obviously where we, what we know from the original movie is that that's what what the if she's planning on using Luke the same way she did Leia, um, then obviously that's going to break canon in a way that would i would actually be upset about because i don't but i don't, I don't think, think they're gonna, they're, yeah, yeah uh, i don't think they're gonna do that to that would be with. such a major break but so. i think she's starting to put the the pieces together like why was bail care about luke or the oh like obviously she ran into owen before and she knew the whole backstory so maybe she's connecting her own dots in her head yeah and uh maybe it will be a situation where obi-wan has to save luke and uh you know she's trying to take away from vader what vader took away from her because she says the jedi were her only family Mm -hmm. and he slaughtered them i I thought the way that was directed was very scary as well seeing hayden christensen back in that robe, back in the hood just 
slaughtering younglings. So maybe it will be a situation like that where she she threatens to reveal the secret or she you know she's about to kill Luke and then tell Vader what she did just to get any type of revenge events uh just to get any type of revenge against him because the, she doesn't stand a chance when it comes to fighting. No way Luke should have been able to touch that man. Right. And it's funny because now, you know, you watch those original three movies and you're like, God damn, I know what this guy could really do. But he's still, you know, he's still in his 20s at this point. So is he? Yeah. Or early 30s. (laughs) Darth Vader was like 42 when he died. It's pretty funny. Really? Yeah. (laughs) You have to think it's only 20 years after Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, that's true. 24 years, 25 years. Right. Yeah, he was looking bad. (laughs) He did survive lava, but whatever. Um, I thought Obi, you know, obviously he used the lightsaber to deflect some blasts, stuff like that. But his force push of Reva was impressive. Oh, okay, you're getting it back a little here. Yeah, he pushed some of the stormtroopers back as well. Right. When he gave Kumail the lightsaber, I'm like, this is not what I want. When he's like, I could, I, I don't need a lightsaber. I don't need any weapons to fight. I'm like... I, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see that though. Oh, that's definitely happening in the finale. Because you ran away last time, <laughs> right? That we're gonna get the big fight there. If they don't, if they say, "Oh, the rematch was Episode Three or whatever it was," that mm-hmm. would be such a disappointment. But <laughs> we're just like the mental game. Oh, he, he fought him using his mind this time. Yeah, no, that would cool. be cool. Not as cool as cool, smart, yeah. right? Um, cerebral. But I'm looking for dumb fun. Yeah, I'm looking for those laser swords to be. Vroom, vroom. All that stuff. That's the good stuff. I, I, I definitely think we're going to get it. But even uh, after the yeah. last episode, my like obviously now Reva's not. She still may be an antagonist, but she's not who we thought she was. Right. And my whole thing was like, well, you have basically Reva, who's the antagonist of the series, and then you have Darth Vader, the overarching antagonist of the whole saga, pretty much. So how are you going to basically conclude both of those conflicts? Well, they they definitely had a chance. In a world where Star Wars would be willing to embrace these darker themes fully, Darth Vader kills her there. And yeah. it's the tragic end to her story. She played the game and she lost brutally. How are we going to do the spinoff? <laughs> exactly. That's why I, I think that it would have been such a great moment, a, a very dark moment and a tragic moment, like I said, for that character. But yeah, now, now it becomes a bit more difficult uh, unless they do have future plans for this character where wherever she ends up here, they're going to make the excuse, oh, it's, it's not finished yet. But I think this was the best episode for the character and a lot of it hinged on her talking about her experiences in the temple, asking Obi-Wan why you weren't there to save us and how traumatic that can be and seeing it through her eyes, a child's eyes. You know, that's a horrible thing that a child should never experience and it never leaves you. That's why I thought the revenge journey, them setting it up that way, or them revealing that it was a revenge plot, was, for me, very satisfying for the character. Where she's not this traditional, I'm just evil for the sake of being evil, I I just want to beat Darth Vader's buddy. So I've got motivations here, and I'm so unhinged because of this trauma that I can't get over. And to me, that that made her character so much more interesting and complex, to the point where, yeah, I would like to go back and kind of watch her and the way she moves and the way she operates in those earlier episodes, Mm -hmm. knowing in the back of my mind that she's desperate to kill Darth Vader, and everything she does is building towards that goal. And then imagine if it ended that way, after getting owned in that fight and then just sliced in half. That's awesome. It's awesome storytelling. I'm not saying it's awesome for her, but unfortunately it's Star Wars is for kids, as they like to say. <laughs> Although Darth Vader d- definitely challenges that point <laughs> every time he shows up. No, he literally kills the kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I saw someone mention on Twitter that the building he's looking at when we first see him is Padme's penthouse. Always creeping, man. Can never give it up. <laughs> That's so weird. He- Somebody's going to zoom in, find binoculars in the corner of the scene. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> well, what did you think about the whole look of that scene? The look and the feel? No, I liked it a lot. And I, I liked how it wasn't... Obviously, there was some de-aging, I feel, but I don't think it was overly done. They didn't try to replicate these two characters from episode two. Do you think there was de-aging, or do you think they just powdered up Hayden Christensen? They touched it up looked, in some way. I don't know. He if looked his age. Digital de-aging, or... I didn't mind it. Prosthetic de-aging, but they right. did something okay. to kind of... Um, make him look a little younger. A little because f- Obi Wan looked younger. <laughs> I don't know if that's just a Ewan he McGregor just dyed thing. His beard, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ewan McGregor is such a good-looking dude, yeah. you know. And for him to be, it's funny because people of his age, fifty years ago, 
weren't looking like that, you know. <laughs> but it wasn't anything like remotely close to Princess Leia, right? Yeah, no. I, or I, at first, I was looking at it f- a little funny, but then I, I, I was just enjoying the moment. And I like that because you know, before we had all this technology, people would play younger actors, younger versions, and you would just accept it. And it's not that much of a leap. No, and I, I, I remember I used to say years ago, I would love for them to bring back you and McGregor, Hayden Christensen, and do a spinoff movie set in that era between two and three. Give them another shot and that's this is basically what they're doing obviously it's after the prequels but now getting that flashback i I absolutely loved it i don't know why they're training with the lightsabers you'd think that they would just use wiffle ball bats you you know you slip and fall that's a limb the force yeah the force i guess so right that doesn't usually work but especially chang and anakin he's definitely trying to kill you no yeah he's a fucking lunatic nobody wants like oh you you crazy man Um, But the way, that's the thing, you can do the flashback and can have no relation to the story, but the way they spliced it in to really develop the narrative of this episode was impressive. That these are the lessons Anakin, that these are the lessons Obi-Wan was trying to teach Anakin, the lessons that he always struggled to learn and now still struggles with in the present day, even though he's as powerful as he's ever been. So that was very impressive to me and and it fit, you know, it wasn't just done for fan service. There's always an element of fan service in it, but it fit the narrative and that's always the most important part yes and it, it was really cool seeing them interact again and i do think that um this is buddies yeah and i do think anakin has always been it's cute. like what cute well, yeah okay but um like it it gave us a glimpse into tall their relationship where like, like they, they stay true to who we got in the prequels yeah, like definitely. It, it was very much prequel Anakin and Obi Wan, and they kind of uh, an extension of the relationship we've seen them have through those first three movies. It serves a story, so I don't think it's too fan servicey at all. It would have been fan servicey if it was like, mm, "Training is complete. Come get some lunch." <laughs> Yoda's got the lemonade. <laughs> yeah, thirsty you must be. <laughs> they go to the 1950s diner after training. That's a tradition. <laughs> Yeah, so that would have been like that. That fit the story, and I mean, if you want to really nitpick it, the whole series is kind of fan servicey. The fact that we're even doing this, but who cares? I like to be serviced. I was impressed by Darth Vader allowing the Grand Inquisitor to have his moment because that's very much a Darth Vader moment, and then he walks in and really just steals it. Mm-hmm. He even walks in front of Vader, and he's the one that finishes talking shit to Reva. So, uh, Reva, <laughs> Darth Vader pulled back there and let the Grand Inquisitor have his his big moment. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've seen Vader in the past. Kind of, I wonder if he. I wonder if you know. Even though, even I haven't seen uh, Rebels, so I don't know yeah. how strong he actually is, and I don't know if they ever did come to blows because that always happens. Mm-hmm. With you got a red lightsaber, you're eventually going to turn on your buddy with a red lightsaber. I don't know how powerful he is. I wonder if there's like a respect there, sort of like he had for Tarkin. Yeah, like this guy's not on my level, but he's an All NBA All Star. <laughs> um, I can win with him. Yeah, I can win without him too, but it makes it a little easier. Right. I'm not taking less money. <laughs> he, no, yeah, I always like, because Vader, even when he says with uh, Reva, when he says, you know, no need for, like, all the civilities and things like that, there's a time and place for everything. Even when he, uh, like, undresses uh, Ben Mendelsohn and Rogue One, what the fuck's, I don't even, the Death Star guy. Um, like, when he wants to be ruthless, he can, but I think he always has a certain re- level of respect for certain people. And it's always, yeah, and I think it adds to some characters when he, when they do get that respect. Like Tarkin, he's not even Force-sensitive, and it seems like him and Vader are almost equals. Yeah, and when people were upset that Vader didn't kill Reva at the end of, um, I guess that was episode th- four, you can argue that Vader was using her, that Vader was aware of what mm-hmm. she was trying to do, that she was trying to get revenge. He needed to let things play out. But in this episode, it makes no sense that he didn't kill her. It's a nitpick. Uh, I'm obviously not too hung up on it, but... I think overall the episode was was good and uh, definitely probably the best yeah the best episode that they've released so far. I think so too, and that's why I th- like I actually thought that, like they were gonna do like I respect the the effort Reva, no, and like use that to kind of further manipulate her into joining him. Yeah, though, and it's gonna be interesting to see how this all plays out and how it wraps up and where these characters end up because hey, they might be announcing Obi Wan Kenobi series part two, mm. season two. You think? Uh, I wouldn't put it past these motherfuckers. <laughs> four sp- we're getting four spinoffs out of this. Kumal, Little Leia, the Little Leia show, um, Reva, mm-hmm. and um, just an Obi-Wan Freck. spinoff. <laughs> Freck. <laughs> They're like, we're going to spin off an Obi-Wan show from the Obi-Wan show. <laughs> 
All right, guys, that does it for this uh, review of Part 5. We will obviously be back next week for Part 6 of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Make sure you follow us on social media at NerdSoup on Twitter, Instagram to get all the updates for our upcoming videos and reviews, and we'll see you next week. Damn, we were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.